Welcome to this training on CoBeam Rags base concept. In the following presentation and hands-on workshops, you get the insights you need to get started on your CoBeam Rags education journey. No matter what your role is, I recommend you to start with this session and then choose freely from the list of available courses. And now, let's take a look at our agenda. First, I will explain what is CoBeam Rags and show its core product features. We will take a look at the workspace and trackers and register a trial account for Corbin or X. Once we created a new workspace, we look at the navigation basics, including the different views. And last but not least, we will do some administration exercises, such as adding users and changing overall settings. What is Corbin or X? CoBeam Rx is a holistic integrated platform to develop better products faster with full traceability. It breaks down silos and automate processes across teams, systems, and enterprise. It has a robust compliance support for medical, automotive, avionics, and pharmaceutical industries, as well as for other sectors. Among others, it supports Agile, Vodafone, Hybrid, Scale Agile Framework, and large-scale Scrum processes. And one of the most important value, it is a trusted tool that provides lifecycle traceability. CoBeam reacts based on the industry proven CoBeam or ALM engine, but with an updated Angular user interface. It's intuitive, simplified, and refined for medical use cases. It offers an advanced document management. ALM and EQMS in one unified platform. Its updated configuration template supports US FDA and EU MDR medical device regulations. Pre-configured with mature processes, but on the other hand, it's highly flexible to adapt to your needs. Most popular features and integrations from CodeBeamer are present. It's integrated with Jira, Git, Bitbucket, Word, Excel, and Jenkins, among others. This diagram gives you an overview of workspaces in CoBeam Rex. CoBeam Rex data is organized into workspaces. Workspaces are secure collaborative environments where users can share, discuss, contribute, coordinate, and find information. Workspaces are made of multiple trackers. Trackers are logical containers, for example, for requirements or test cases or other artifacts. Think of them as tables in a relational database or as dynamic documents. They can be used in both hardware and software development to keep a record of evolving product specifications, engineering documents, and much more. Trackers have a customizable set of fields, so you can easily adjust the default fields or add new ones in accordance with your needs. And each tracker has its own workflow that can also be flexibly modified in order to align to your processes. Workspaces are connected to user accounts so we can easily control who has access to a given workspace and with which permissions. Users might have different roles in different workspaces. Let's take an example. Let's say you are the admin of workspace one, but at the same time in workspace two, you are added with a reviewer role with read-only permissions. Within the workspace, we find a wiki section that contains information on the project itself. This is different from the personal wiki, which is connected to your own user account. The document type tracker in CodeBeam Rex allows us to store and manage any kind of files in the workspace. Last but not least, let me talk about the history tracking and the version handling in CodeBeam Rex. We are tracking both tracker configuration and tracker data. So we will see who has updated the workflow of a tracker at the same time, the history of an item, for example, a concrete requirement, will be available as a list of versions, and if necessary, we can easily restore one of the previous states. In Cobin Rex, we might use multiple tracker types in accordance with the different types of work items we will work on as part of the project. As you can see on this diagram, we can have, for example, requirement and document type trackers. 
But besides this, we can use Epic or user stories for Scrum projects. We can associate risk with them. When it comes to project management, we can talk about teams, releases, tasks, time recording. For each of them, we have a separate record type in Kobe Morax. And when it comes to test management, we can use test case, test configuration, and test run trackers. During the testing, we can report bugs into bug type trackers. We have issue type tracker for incident management and change request type tracker for change management. And these were only the main tracker types in Kobe Morax. You can find more. Let me add some additional notes. Tracker types are predefined in the system. You cannot create your own type, but everything else can be easily customized on the tracker. As I mentioned earlier, you can customize the fields, the workflow, and even the permissions. It's important to mention that Intland offers workspace templates, for example, for the medical industry. That includes pre-configured trackers based on industry standards and best practices. This can save days or weeks for you in terms of configuration effort. And now let's continue with the workshop. In the first one, we will register a free 30-day trial account for Kobe Morax. And once we complete the registration, we will create our first workspace using a template. First, let's navigate to the trial instance of Kobe Morax. You can reach it on the URL trial.kobemer-x.com. I pretend I don't have an account yet, so I hit register now. I will use some dummy data. And now I can hit register. The system will generate an activation email and through that you can complete your registration. After you clicked on the activation link, you will get to this page where you can complete your registration. As you can see, I already populated the fields, so I did company, industry, country and phone, because these are required informations to finish your registration. And now I can hit continue. We are landing on the Create Your Workspace page in Codebeamer X. Here you can create a workspace in multiple ways. Let's focus on the options on the left-hand side first. With the first option, you can create a default workspace that will include some basic trackers. With the second option, you can create a workspace from a template file. In this case, you will use a file which has been generated based on an existing workspace. And with the third option, you can create a workspace from a Recif file. But for now, let's keep these options and let's focus on the right-hand side of the screen on the templates offered by Intland. As I mentioned before, these templates include pre-configured trackers based on industry standards and best practices. If you click on the preview button, for example, on this one, you can get more information on the given template. To be able to try some of our industry-specific safety critical templates, for example, the medical software engineering template or the PharmaGam 5 template, you have to reach out to Intland first. In other words, you need to submit a request by clicking on that button. But the majority of the templates can be used right away. So for example, the requirements management template, the test management template and or the scrum template here you can see the button Use Template. So let me select the Requirements Management Template for this demo workspace. On the opening panel, you can specify the name and the key of the workspace. And you can decide if you want to include some uh, demo data into your workspace. So if you want to have some work items or documents or some pre-built wiki pages or dashboards, Yes, I prefer this way, so I will keep the selections. And now I hit continue. And now Kobe Morax is creating our workspace. Okay, 
Let's continue with the navigation basics. In the next workshop, we will learn how to open a workspace and how to open a tracker within a workspace. We will talk about the views within a tracker and we will take a look at the administration. We we'll learn how to add users and how to change our settings. Let's start it. If you manage to log in into Codebeam or X, navigate to the workspace menu in the top and in the drop down you can see the workspaces you recently accessed, so you can open these workspaces directly from here. Or if you click just on the workspace menu, then you will see all of the workspaces you have access to. To open up a workspace, I'll click on its icon or name. And now we have landed in the wiki page within the workspace. This is the space where you can find and share information about the project itself. And now let's try to open up a tracker. If you look at the second menu bar with the gray background, you can see that the wiki menu is in the first position and the tools is always in the last position. Between the two menus, you will see tracker groups. In the first one, we have the following trackers. In the second one, we have these trackers and so on. Let me go back to the first and let me open up the user requirement specification tracker. And now we landed in the tracker view. This is how you can get to a tracker. And now let me show you a second way how you can do this path. Let's go back to the workspace overview and let's move your cursor over the workspace you would like to use. And the tracker link will appear. If you click on that, you can select the tracker directly from the screen. And now it's time to talk about the tracker views. What you can see on my screen is the document view, which is the default view for the requirements type tracker, but this is something that you can freely change. On the left side panel, you can see a list of items in a hierarchical view. The different items have different colors, these represent the status of the items. With drag and drop actions, I can change the existing hierarchy or I can establish new one. So let's say I want to move, move over the timing item under the sales and marketing. I can do that simply with this action. And now timing became the child of the sales and marketing. If I double click on timing, then I will get to the item view. This is where you can see all of the information relates to the item. On the first tab, you can see all of the metadata, the attributes and the description. On the second tab, you can add and review attachments and comments. And on the third tab, you can review the history of the item and if necessary, you can restore one of the previous versions. In rest of the tabs, you can review the association and references of the item. And now let's return to the document view. In the middle section, in the middle screen, you can see the inside panel, which include the summary, the name, and the description of the item. This is perfect for a quick update if you would like to simply update something here. On the right hand side, you can add comments or review the already existing comments. If you go back to the middle and click on the right panel icon, then it will pull up the attributes panel on that you can quickly update the metadata. For example, you can change the status. Besides these functions, we have the so-called library view available here. In the top right corner, if you click on the book icon, that will open that panel. Through that, you can copy or link over existing items from other trackers or even from other workspaces. Let's say we already elaborated a requirement in another workspace in demo two, and now we would like to reuse that. If I open up this tree, and within the demo two, I open up the customer requirement specification, this is another tracker, then I can simply copy over the transmission item into this tracker, or I can apply references and association on this item. But now I will just simply copy this over here. We covered the document view, so let's get to the next one. If you click on the second icon in the top right corner, then we will get to the list view which is much like an Excel table in which you can freely change, for example, the order of the column. So I can put status into the second position with a simple drag and drop, or I can 
add or remove columns from the view. Through the inline edit, you can easily update uh, the items in this view. So for example, I can change the status of this item, or I can assign this item to, for example, to myself. Okay, this is my name. Good, and so this is the list view. We can get to the third view. It's called cardboard or Kanban board view. This is a great tool to track the progress of the items or quickly update the status for this is a perfect thing for, for the daily uh, standups, for example. And let's get to the last view. It's called the calendar view, which is of course uh, uh, designed to display the items by date and you can freely decide by which date you would like to display the items so you can uh, choose for example the start date, end date, submission date of the item, it depends what kind of date information you added on the items. In the final part of the course, let's take a look at the administration. If you have admin permission within the workspace, then you will see the admin menu in the top right corner. Under that, we can find multiple items. With the first one, we can create new trackers in the workspace. In the configuration course, we will cover this topic in detail. With that second option, we can update the settings of the workspace. We can change the name, key, or the icon, or we can modify the tracker groups. For example, in this workspace, we have four tracker groups and we can easily move the trackers across them. On the third tab, we can remove the workspace if it's not needed anymore. Let me go back to the admin menu. This is where we can use, the, in the third option, we can manage the users. If I open up this panel, you can see that here we can add new members. So for example, if I look for bond, then I can add this user to the workspace with the role I specify. And as you can see, I can select multiple roles for the given member. Now I can hit save. I can also remove members here, of course, and I can customize the roles. And if necessary, you can create, you can define new roles as well. I return again, once again, to the admin menu. And as you can see, we can import data into the workspace, for example, from doors, or Recif files, but we have many other integrations as well. We can export the data into a template file, or we can export it into a Recif file again. In the last item within the menu, we can find the trash, where we can review what has been deleted before, and if necessary, we can restore that item. And this is the end of our introduction course. In this session, we learned what is called BIMREX, we talked about core product features and workspaces and trackers, and we learned about the navigation basics. Thanks for watching.